Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, um, and we will go ahead and get started. Um, so as I do this, thanks, everyone, uh, for joining. Uh, so my name is Ben Aaron Sibia, and uh, myself and, and Yoni CD, we're going to be talking about the uh, Software Engineering Working Group and, and MMRM package. Um, so let's go ahead and, and get it uh, started. So um, a couple of things that we want to talk about in today's agenda. First off, we're going to give an introduction and an overview of what the Software Engineering Working Group is. We're going to be talking about mixed models for repeated measures, why it is a problem. We'll do a little deep dive into the MMRM package. So talking things about why is it not why is this not you know, yet another package? We'll talk a little bit about long-term perspectives and comparing the MMRM package to, to SAS, and Yoni's going to take us through a demo. And then we'll finally close it out and, and talk about um, next steps. Um, before we get started, just wanted to say thank you a lot to our sponsors, like our studio, PSI, and, and others. Um, obviously, if you signed up for this webinar, you know that these webinars are, are free. They're accessible on the May uh, R Studio or the R Consortium webinar uh, page. And so big shout out to everyone helping to, to make this uh, possible. So quick introduction. Uh, my name is Ben Arisibi, as I mentioned. I'm a director of data science at GSK, and I sit within our statistical data sciences innovation hub. Uh, and Yoni, if you want to introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Yanni Sidi. I'm a director of modeling simulation at Sage Therapeutic inside the data science. Great. So let's talk about software engineering and, and biostatistics. So um, as I'm sure people are aware, open source software has gained a lot of increasing popularity within biostats over the past two decades or so. And that's led to some really interesting pros, but also some really interesting cons. Uh, with this new new way of working. So from a pro standpoint, we have a, a rapid uptake of, of a lot of new statistical methods, and there's a lot of new opportunities for collaboration and innovation. What One of the major cons, though, is that there's a huge variability in software quality. Anyone that kind of exists within the open source world, that is a big thing that we always have to think about when introducing new new software, new packages, or, or anything into our environments. So reliability is key, uh, and efficiency and, and maintain, maintainability is, is very different in, in this new world that, that we're beginning to enter. So developing that high quality software with good coding practices, re reproducible outputs, and self-sufficient documentation, that is critical in, in going forward in how we inform uh, clinical and regulatory agencies. So how do we deal with these issues? So to deal with these issues of like quality, of quality assurances for our packages and creating that high quality uh, statistical software, a group came together recently and we created the Software Engineering Working Group, SWEWG, uh, to look at our packages from a statistical point of view. Um, this Software Engineering Group, to give you a little background, it's an official working group of the ASA biopharmaceutical section. It was formed in August of 2022, and it's a cross-industry collaboration with more than 30 members from over 20 organizations. Uh, I've included a link to our, our homepage there, but this is that homepage is where we store a lot of our information about members, packages that we might be working on, as well as uh, things like webinars, documentation, and things like that about what are our thoughts about how to deal with software engineering, especially as it relates to statistical packages. Oops, sorry. So what are the goals of the group? So our primary goal is to collaborate to engineer our packages that implement uh, important statistical methods to fill in those critical gaps. And then our second goal is to develop and disseminate best practices for engineering high quality open source statistical software. Um, the secondary goal is something that we're beginning to, to look at in depth uh, more frequently, because I think there's a, a real need uh, in the industry to think about about these big questions um, and how we deal with uh, how do we engineer these packages with the adoption of new open source uh, ways of working. 
So some activities that we've undertaken recently. So the first R package, uh, MMRM, was published on CRAN in October of 2022 and updated in December. So the goal of the group is to establish this package as a new standard for fitting mixed models for repeated measures, MMRM. Um, and we have been developing an op and adopting best practices for software in the MMR package, and, we've, and it's been open sourced. Um, so the package itself can be found on the Open Pharma GitHub repo. Um, and you can see sort of how it is that we're going about developing, as well as any of the kind of discussions that are ongoing uh, related to the package. Currently, it's under active development to add more features. Uh, so it's a great place if you have ideas on what should be added uh, or any places that you'd like to have conversations about the package itself. Uh, this is a, a great place uh, to start. So the question is, why did we why do we need a package for MMRM? Why was that the first package that was looked at? So mixed models for repeated measures, MMRM, it's a popular choice for uh, analyzing longitudinal continuous outcomes in randomized clinical trials. The problem with MMRM is there's no great R package. Initially, we thought that MMRM, the MMRM problem could be solved by using a combination of like LME4 and LMER tests, but we learned that this approach failed on large data sets. It was slow and did not converge. Then we started to look at NLME, four, NLME, and we found that it does not give satellite uh, adjusted degrees of freedom. It has convergence issues, and with E means, it's only an approximate. So from there, we tried to extend GLM TMB to calculate satellite adjusted degrees of, of freedom. Um, so before creating a new package, we looked at GLM TMB. So we try to improve on that existing package and we tried to extend it to calculate satellite adjusted degrees of freedom, but unfortunately it did not work. And we had to think about long-term maintenance and, and responsibility of a, of a package. So we came up with some idea and some, some details. Because GLM TV is always using a random effects representation, we cannot have a real unstructured model. Well, we only want to fit a fixed effects model to the structured covariance matrix for each subject. So the idea is then to use the template model builder, TMB, directly, as also underlying GLM TMB to code the exact model we want. So we do this by implementing the log likelihood function in C++ using the TMB provided libraries. So what are some of the advantages of TMB? It's a fast C++ framework for defining uh, objective functions. Um, RCPP could have been an alternative interface. It has automatic differentiation of the log likelihood as a function of the variance parameters. We get the gradient and the Hessian exactly and without additional coding. And this can be used from the R side with the TMB interface and plugged into optimizers. So why is it not just another package? There's a lot of ongoing maintenance and support from the pharmaceutical industry. It's supported by the American Statistical Association. And the package is part of the mission, but to emphasize, our goal is to push out information on practicing or on practices for engineering high quality open source statistical software. And I, as I mentioned before, this is really key. Our goal is to push out these practices, to define these practices, and to have like real thought behind it. That way we can establish an industry wide viewpoint on how to how to build out these open source statistical pieces of software. Um, oops, sorry, uh, it went all, it went all the way to the end. Um, so from here, I'm going to hand it over to Yoni, and he's going to take us through uh, a comparison of SAS and R for the MMRM uh, model and package. Great. Thank you. So and we're going to go through a high level uh, comparison of SAS and R. And to run an MMRM model in SAS, uh, you can, uh, it's recommended to use PROC MIX or PROC GLM. Uh, Glimmix can also uh, do this. Um, uh, there are less model assumptions that are applied in ProcMix than ProcGLM, primarily how one treats the missing variable, uh, missing observations. Um, we will compare ProcMix to the MMRM package under the following um, characteristics and attributes. So there's um, what's listed here, the documentation, the covariance structure, unit testing, degrees of freedom methods, estimation methods themselves and contrasts, how you um, can compute contrasts. Next. 
So with regards to documentation, we'll, we'll be sharing these slides afterwards. So each of these uh, bullet points is actually a link. So um, we've constructed a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, the documentation that the MMRM package has compared to ProcMix. Um, so each of them, uh, for those familiar with SAS, uh, there's the standard homepage of the, of the proc mixed uh, documentation. They go through the usage, the theory of, the, of how um, the models are estimated and the different covariance structures uh, that they, uh, they give, uh, along with the degrees of freedom options that they have. Um, similarly, the MMRM package has a similar layout to the documentation uh, where there, there are vignettes for basic usage. There's um, uh, a large uh, uh, vignettes for detailing uh, the estimation methods that are being used. Uh, similarly, with covariance structures, um, they're listed in the documentation. And finally, um, the degrees of freedom, there are separate um, uh, um, uh, vignettes for both the uh, Kenwood Rogers and the Satter's um, uh, degrees of freedom. Next. One major advantage of, using, of MMRM is that the unit testing is, is transparent. Um, there's uh, in the GitHub, uh, page itself. Um, uh, there's the testing uh, folder for the package, and uh, there's um, document that there's uh, uh, for every change and commit to the uh, package. Um, we run through all of these unit tests, and it's uh, reported transparently in the repository. Um, we use a test app framework with uh, the cover package to communicate the coverage of the testing. Um, there's a link at the, at the end here uh, that takes you directly to that folder for the unit tests. Um, we do note that the integration tests of MRMRM compared to the SAS proc mixed, they're set to a tolerance of 10 to the negative three. Um, so obviously if there are differences between uh, SAS uh, estimates and the MMRM estimates, but um, we feel that, that that level of tolerance is acceptable at this time. Next. So comparing the estimation methods, um, both of them apply, uh, can be used for uh, ML and RML. Uh, so those two methods are comparable between the two uh, languages. Next. Covariance structures. So SAS has a lot of different covariance structures. It has 23 non-spatial covariance structures, MMRM has 10. Um, nine of those intersect with SAS. There's one that is in MMRM that is not in uh, the SAS uh, uh, options, which is the anti-dependent uh, homogeneous. SAS has 14 spatial covariance structures compared to a single uh, spatial covariance structure in uh, MMRM. Um, we do, though, uh, have the ability to um, have uh, issues be open for feature requests uh, at the GitHub repository. And um, we already have one, I think, open at, the, at this time. And we're, we're adding that, um, that feature right now. Um, so, uh, if you do feel that you, those 10 that we do have right now, uh, need to add more then uh, feel free to open a pull request and, uh, our feature request and, uh, and it will be accommodated. Next. So in detail, the covariance structures, uh, which ones are available, um, so this is a comparison table for the ones that are available in, in MMRM. Um, so as you can see, there's uh, the unstructured, topless, compound symmetry, autoregressive, anti-dependent, and spatial exponential. Um, both, uh, in nearly all the cases, uh, 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 there's the uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous uh, versions of the uh, 
covariance structures, uh, the unstructured can be unweighted and weighted, similar to PROC next. And again, there's the anti-dependence uh, homogeneous covariance matrix that is available in MMRM, which is not in PROC next at this time. Next. Degrees of freedom methods. So um, there, there's uh, overlap between PROCMIX and MMRM uh, for the degrees of freedom methods. There's um, the Satterthwaite, Kenwood Rogers, and Kenwood Rogers linear, um, which is uh, just a note that the linear is not equivalent to the KR2 setting in PROCMIX, where the documentation there is kind of uh, not that straightforward, but um, when we did the testing, we, we saw that it's not the same, the same setting there. Um, in order to um, get contain between within and residual degrees of freedom, uh, you do have to um, go through EMM means, which does support it, and it is not a native support within the MMRM package at this time. Thanks. Finally, the contrast in LS means. Um, so it, there is native uh, built-in contrasts uh, within the MMRM package. You can use the functions df underscore 1d and df underscore md. Um, these are S, uh, S3 methods that are uh, compatible. There are, there are S3 methods that are compatible with EMM means. So any settings that you do have in the model fit they will be inherited through the EMM means, which means that if you choose, let's say Kenward Rogers uh, degrees of freedom, EMM means will will understand and inherit those uh, 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 degrees of freedom methods and give you uh, LS means that are corrected for Kenward Rogers. Um, you can get LS means difference through the pairs method of the EMM means. Um, uh, by default, PROCMIX and MMRM do not adjust for multiplicity where EMM means does. So that's a little nuance that you need to look out for um, that uh, in order to get the same results as PROCMIX, when using EMM means, you need to uh, uh, set the multiplicity adjustment to null. Um, okay. Great, thanks. <clears throat> so to go back to our, our working group. So what is our, our working group's long-term perspective, the software engineering working group? So, and from a long-term perspective, we view that software engineering, it's a critical confidence in producing high quality statistical software. And a lot of work needs to be done regarding the establishment and dissemination and adoption of best practices for engineering open source software. I, specifically our our industry we this is a new transition that a lot of us are, are moving into so we're trying to figure out what's the best way to do it so that is our goal as, as a group is to think through what does that actual best practice mean our goal as well as improving the way software engineering is done um and if it's if we're able to improve that our goal is our our, our hope is that it's improving the efficiency reliability, and then innovation within biostatistics organizations across the, uh, the industry. In terms of what's next with MMRM and the software engineering working group, so as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the, the presentation, one of the things that we started to look at and work on is preparing public training materials to disseminate best practices for software engineering in the biostats community. Um, and then at the beginning of February, a face-to-face -face workshop will take place in, in, in Basel, Switzerland with a focus on open source software for clinical trials, um, organizing conference sessions with a focus on statistical software engineering at CN, JSM, and ASA FDA workshops, and then putting together a video series on best practices for, for software engineering. And a, a link to that video series is included. Finally, uh, the software engineering group is beginning to look at and work on some new um, packages. So things like uh, SASR, HTA, and then a Bayesian MMRM. So if you have an interest on working on these top topics, please, we're an open group, come work with us. 
Um, and information can be found on the software engineering working group, which can be found uh, at this link here, the ASA um, uh, uh, Biopharmaceutical Software Engineering Working Group uh, homepage. Um, so um, that is really what we wanted to cover today. Um, so um, if you have any questions, please post it in the comments section. Uh, and as we wait for comments to come in, I'll just quickly show uh, the um, the existing GitHub repo for the MMRM package. Um, so as you can see, this is where we do uh, a lot of our work for the MMRM. We have a, an issues log uh, where we have conversations about sort of what things need to occur um, in terms of enhancements, bugs that we might find, documentation that we need. Um, so even if you don't feel comfortable in developing, you know, features. Um, there's always needs uh, in terms of documentation um, that, you know, if you'd like to contribute, it's a great way as sort of like a, a first issue. Um, also to show the vignettes um, that, that uh, Yoni mentioned, um, within the MMRM package website, we have a, a great website uh, here. Um, and under articles, we have a lot of things around the details of how we do the model fitting, covariance structures, an introduction uh, to MMRM and some other details about the package. So within our vignettes, you can see how to use the package, um, what you can expect outputs to be, some control functions and different things like that. Uh, one additional vignette that is in production right now that um, will be useful is uh, a direct comparison of proc statements with um, MMRM statements and also other R packages that um, can run uh, MMRM models such as uh, GLS and LME4. So that is something that is being worked on right now, but yeah. that is in the, in the plan for the future. And um, that will be a good resource for new users uh, to the package. Yep. That's a great call out. And as mentioned, since it's all open and transparent, if you want to be part of the conversation, <laughs> here's, here's the, the issue if you, if you want to uh, contribute. Um, great. So I haven't seen any questions come in about the, the working group or the, the package. Um, so we'll give it another couple of minutes just in case. Um, um, cool. So we have one. Um, so do we have any plans or are you already working on comparing performance between MMRM and PROC mixed under different scenarios? So like covariance structures, intercorrelation between repeated measurements, et cetera, through a simulation. Yes, so in the in the unit testing, as stated before, um, we are running compares, direct comparisons to SAS proc mixed under uh, data sets and simulations um, that um, that have to answer up to a ten to the negative three tolerance between all all of the things that you that you mentioned in the in the question. Yes, great. Uh, and as mentioned during the presentation, all of our, our tests are, are found within the GitHub repo. So that's what I'm trying to share here uh, on, on screen. Uh, any other questions that we can help answer? All right. Well, if there are no additional questions, we'll, we'll keep our, this webinar uh, relatively short. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate you uh, bearing with us as we um, dealt with some of our, our technical issues. And please, if you have an interest in joining the group, um, I will, I'll put the, uh, a link to the, the primary website in, in the chat in the comments so that everyone can have access. Please join us. Um, and, you know, I think it's really exciting to be able to start thinking through 
what are ways to, you know, establish for the industry a uh, an approach to building out um, software of a, uh, statistical packages. So thanks everyone uh, for joining. I will post the, the, the website here in the chat for you um, if you have a, any interest in joining. Um, and thank you so much uh, and we'll end the broadcast. So thanks everyone. All right, thank you.